candidates for governor in Nevada square off. Joe Lombardo, Joey Gilbert, Dean Heller, John Lee, and Guy Nora. This is your local election headquarters, Nevada Race for Governor, the Republican primary debate. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight for our Republican gubernatorial primary debate. We are just off the Las Vegas Strip here at the KLAS studios. This is airing and streaming across the state of Nevada here in Las Vegas as well as at KTVN2 in Reno. I'm Denise Valdez of KLAS TV and joining us tonight are Steve Sibelius who is the politics and government editor at the Las Vegas Review Journal along with Vanessa Murphy who is an investigative reporter here at KLAS. The five Republicans standing on the stage tonight have met our eligibility requirements. Joining us are Clark County Sheriff Joe Lombardo, Attorney Joey Gilbert, North Las Vegas Mayor John Lee, former Senator Dean Heller, and venture capitalist Guy Nora. So here are the rules for tonight's debate. Each candidate will get 60 seconds to answer a question. The candidate will then get 30 seconds to answer if there's a follow-up or perhaps a rebuttal. And if a clarification is needed, they will have an additional 15 seconds. Now we will remind the candidates throughout the night of those times. The sound of a bell will ring when their time is up. And that's what the bell will sound like. Let's get Steve started with our first question tonight. Thanks, Denise. Welcome, gentlemen. Uh, let's get right to the questions. 19 children and two adults were killed at a Texas elementary school yesterday. Uh, Mr. Lombardo, you are first to answer this question, and you have 60 seconds. What would you do to protect children and staff in schools from mass shootings like this one? Well, thank you, Steve. And first and foremost, thank you for Channel 8 for bringing us uh, together tonight to express our views on whatever the subject matter may be. Uh, and first and foremost, uh, my condolences go out to the victims, the families, and the community in Texas. It's a tragic event similar to what occurred here locally on 1 October. So I've lived that experience and I know what they're going through in that space. But the question is, is what will we do reference that type of tragedy moving forward? Or what can we do as in the position of governor? Well, first and foremost, what I have learned through my experience in law enforcement is uh, the mental health services. We are lacking the commonality on most of these uh, tragic shootings, uh, these mass shootings, is the nexus being um, mental health and the lack of resources to address the individuals that who have been identified to have deficiencies who may cause harm into the future and addressing that and second uh, school safety all the mechanisms to put in place to address school safety in a more robust level now, mr lombardo a, a 30 second uh, follow-up you mentioned mental health um, where do you think you'll find the money to uh, devote additional resources to mental health in the state well, what I've learned in, in trips to San Antonio where they have best practices with that because a significant amount of uh, calls for service that we respond to on a daily basis involves mental health individuals out of San Antonio. And what they did was a public private partnership to bring that money and resources together because they are the experts in the field and allocation, reallocation and auditing of existing revenue streams within the state budget. All right, thank you, Mr. Lombardo. Uh, Mr. Gilbert, you are next. You also have uh, 60 seconds. What would you do to protect children and staff in schools from mass shootings like the one in Texas? Well, my heart goes out to the families that lost loved ones. It's, it's absolutely devastating. Um, the mental health issue in the state of Nevada, we're last in the nation for mental health. Um, resources for children, teenagers, and adults are lacking in Las Vegas where we have two mental health facilities are overstaffed and don't have enough resources. We need to do a better job there. Um, Governor Sisolak and the Democrats defunded school police by $30 million in 2019. There's roughly 146 officers you know, for 54,000 employees, 320,000 kids at 366 campuses. And so we need to do a better job. I would fully fund public safety. And you know, there's so much corruption, bloat, and waste in this government. When Nevada got the second largest amount of coronavirus stimulus relief funds in the nation, uh, we have the money. We're just not using it properly. So I would use the people's money to, to secure our most prized asset, our children. And, and uh, uh, Mr. Gilbert, uh, another 30-second follow-up for you. Um, uh, you say there's 
waste in the in the state government. Where exactly would you find the funds to fully fund uh, school police, for example? Well, just in a casual review of Clark County school budget, Wa Clark County and Washoe County, I found nearly you know 30, 35 percent could be saved by privatizing services. The bloat alone, administrators, as I've said before, you could literally go through them and say duck, duck, goose, duck, duck, goose. And if those people want to stay uh, and work with kids, they can go in the classroom on a teacher's salary. That also fixes the teacher shortage. But the money's there. It's just being wasted. Thank you, Mr. Gilbert. Mr. Heller, uh, you are next. You have 60 seconds. What would you do to protect uh, students and staff in schools from violence? Well, like first of all, Steve, saw? yeah, first of all, Steve, thank you, uh, Denise and Vanessa, for having us here at Channel A for the opportunity to have this conversation. I'm glad we started out uh, with this particular question because I think we do need to acknowledge the tragedy that, that did occur in Texas. This is the 27th, 27th school shooting this year. And this is continuing on and on and on. And one of the problems that we have is that uh, you, you take a look at the Washington Post. Washington Post did a story this week on the Clark County School District down here and how dangerous it is. And the teachers are the ones that are being targeted now with clubs, with knives, with sexual assault, even students raping teachers. This has to change. It's time to break up this school district. I'll ch I'll, I, I think Mesquite ought to have their own school district. Boulder City ought to have theirs. Summerlin should have all theirs. This is too big and, and we are fortunate that we haven't had this kind of tragedy occur in our school district here in Las Vegas. Thank you, Mr. Heller. Uh, Mr. Lee, you are next. Uh, same question in 60 seconds. What would you do to protect Thank you school? very much. First, I'm as sad as these gentlemen are here, too. At being a father and a grandfather and a great-grandfather, I don't know how these families are going to be able to recover from this accident and this incident that happened in this country. We have things that are called soft targets where people can just walk in and do whatever they want with a gun. There's nothing to protect the children, our stores, and, and places that are soft targets. I also believe in school safety too. I think there's doors you can walk in here. This one doesn't unlock until you go through this door. You get a chance to look at people. I think one entry makes the most sense to me. Um, I know in Elko they have fathers up there that are now coming into the school and just walking around and observing and taking care of some of the responsibility away from the school district. I think we need to include also when we talk about mental health more in parent involvement in what's going on at our schools and um, I also believe we need to break up school district and get more inclusive with the cities into the school districts. Thank you Mr. Lee. Mr. Nora, um, same question, 60 seconds, yeah. what would you do to protect schools? You know last night as I was feeling so bad for these parents and all these families out there and praying for them, I thought I'm a venture capitalist. How do I solve problems? Because that's what I'm here for. I want to start something called the Battle Born Marshals. And Battle Born Marshals are going to report to the Department of Safety. And they're going to go out to the 664 schools. And they're going to be marshals the way we, the same way we have them on our airlines. And that's how we're going to define them from these lunatics that go in and prey on children. Mr. Thank, Nord, you. thank you very much. Um, a 15 second uh, follow up for all the candidates. We'll go in the same order. Uh, are there any restrictions on the ownership or possession of firearms that you think would help this situation? Mr. Lombardo, 15 seconds. No, I don't. I mean, this is an age old question. Is the firearm the fault or is the person holding the firearm? Uh, I have been, I'm different than the rest of the candidates. I don't support a constitutional carry. I think training should go along with it. I do support the evaluation of a person's mental capacity and the ability to possess a gun. And I also support background checks, not universal, but regular background checks associated with removing an individual who is prohibited and may or may Thanks, not sir. need to possess a gun. Thank you for that answer. Mr. Gilbert, same same question. Any restrictions on firearms you think would help this situation? No, I believe we have enough gun laws and these always seem to happen on gun-free zones. We need more involvement from the parents. We need open campuses so people can come in and see what's going on. More contact with these students. This is a mental health issue and gun laws aren't going to solve it. Mr. Heller, same question. 15 seconds. Do you, do you support any restrictions on firearm use? Possession? Uh, I think we've proven in Chicago and New York City that uh, that uh, excessive tax or uh, gun laws do not work. Uh, no, I would not do that. Uh, I don't want to stand here in front uh, on this uh, studio and negotiate away our Second Amendment rights here in the state of Nevada. I support them. I continue to support them, and I'm an A plus with the NRA. 
Sounds good. Thank you, Mr. Heller. Mr. Lee, uh, yeah, same yes, question. Sir. Also, I, I agree with these gentlemen on this. I do know that we need to do what we can to make sure that people have the right to carry again to protect themselves. I know schools are a little bit different, but there's a lot of soft targets in the world. I think we should make sure we can get, if people want to protect themselves, be able to get a CCW license quicker, to be able to support themselves and other people if they need the help. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Mr. North, same I question. I think that uh, we need more organizations like dads and schools to be involved and help us. And a uh, shout out to uh, Pastor Martinez. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate it. Denise? Another topic that our viewers might be talking about around the dinner table is inflation. It is at a 40-year high. And in our 8 News Now, the Hill Emerson College Republican primary poll, more than 44% said the economy, that includes jobs, inflation, taxes. That is the top issue this election. Now the inflation rate is up more than 8%. Gas prices are up more than $1.60 a gallon. Food prices up nearly 11%. And listen to this, the average rent for a three bedroom apartment here in Las Vegas is up 28%. Mr. Gilbert, you are first on this question tonight. What would your plan be as governor to curb inflation in our state? And as a reminder, you have 60 seconds. Well, that's you know a great question. Unfortunately, the problem isn't here in Nevada; it's in D.C. where they're printing money like it's you know growing on a tree. Um, Inflation is actually much higher than eight percent as well. And at the end of the day, we need to do things like not shut our economy down, which should have never happened, especially for the amount of time it did. Um, that was not necessary. I never would have shut this state a day. I'm absolutely the Ron DeSantis of the West. I would have stayed open. I wouldn't have shut a business, a school, a church. I definitely would have tied any doctor's hands. But at the end of the day, you know, we've got to be open for business. We need to have less regulation, less tax here. We need to be a business-friendly state so that companies want to come here. But it's all going to also come down to our schools. Our schools are 50th in the nation for a decade straight, and that directly impacts both crime and the economy. Until we fix our schools, we're going to keep having these problems. And again, you know, the issue here with the schools is we've got restorative justice, you know, credit recovery. We've got to fix our schools, and that will help fix our economy and inflation and everything else. Mr. Gilbert, thank you. Mr. Heller, you now have 60 seconds to answer the same question. What would your plan be as governor to curb inflation in our state? Well, what, uh, what Nevadans need is relief. You're not getting any relief out of Washington, D.C. My plan, I have an economic plan. I'd sure like to hear what the uh, other people on the stage have to say about their economic plan. But we need to cut taxes here in the state of Nevada. When was the last time your government cut your taxes? I want to cut sales tax by the level of inflation. That's what I want to do. If you have 8.5% inflation, I want to cut our sales tax by the same amount. We got to reduce the, the, the pain and suffering that's going on. You go outside uh, and, and look at these marquees and look at the price of gasoline. I saw six ninety nine at South Lake Tahoe this week. I mean, this is bad. It's not five dollars a gallon. It'll be at six dollars by the middle of summer, seven by this November. The, we are in a tough place. We can't even get formula for children at this point, and people can't afford food. Think about that. Right now, the average family here in the state of Nevada is going to pay $3,500 more this year than last year. Next year, it's going to be $5,200 more that, that next year than last year. I mean, this is going to get worse and worse. We need relief. We need a governor that will give relief to these, uh, uh, to these families. So, Mr. Heller, a quick follow-up here. Would you be open to perhaps suspending or eliminating the gas tax then? To get absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, that has been my proposal. Gasoline over $4 a gallon. We will suspend the gasoline tax. That's about 65 cents a gallon here in uh, southern Nevada, about 95 cents up in northern Nevada. Absolutely. That is the answer. We need relief. I also want to uh, eliminate the commerce tax. So we're going to give relief to businesses and hardworking Nevada families. All right. Thank you. Mr. Heller. Now, Mr. Lee, you have 60 seconds for the same question. What would your plan be to curb inflation? Thank you. I understand the struggles that the, the residents of North Las Vegas are having. $5 a gallon. I went to get cereal the other day. $5 for a box of cereal, milk, eggs. It is really, I think there's a lot of profit taking being p taking place in this country right now, and we just can't blame it all on Russia. Um, I, I do know that in North Las Vegas, we don't want to export our children out of our community because we, we are becoming an economic powerhouse here. We've got 1,800 uh, different units now that are being built that are that children can start. New families can come here and start building um, a life together when they first get married. Um, 
in North Las Vegas, we were able to look at what we could do to reduce taxes. Uh, the, the social contract says it's my job to make sure that, that if you give me taxes, I help you out all I can to give you the services you want. So we, did, we, we don't raise fees. The fact is we cut our sewer fees 30 percent. So I just want to know, I signed the no no, no tax pledge. No, no tax pledge increase. I just want to know: Did every Joe? Did you sign that yet? Have you signed the no tax pledge yet? Well, we'll get list Mr. Lombardo to answer that in just a moment. Right now, it's uh, Mr. Norris' turn to answer the same question. You have 60 seconds. What would your plan be as governor to curb inflation? Inflation happens when too much money chases too few goods, and what's happened in the United States of America under the current president is that we just released so much money under the guise of the trillions and trillions of COVID relief and we caused that situation. Washington caused that situation. Nevadans have to pay the price for that, unfortunately. Definitely the tax gas is something I would look at because that just makes so much sense for us. And uh, it w I would just have it out of there for, for as long as we can. But, it, you know, you know we, we can't escape the policies of, of uh, the nation as Nevadans. We live, unfortunately, with the results of them, and inflation is just that. I could have told you, if we keep pumping money like we are, we're going to have inflation. And smart people were saying that already, but that's not what happened, unfortunately. Mr. Nora, thank you. So now, Mr. Lombardo, you have the final remarks on this. What would your plan be as governor to curb inflation in our state? You've got 60 seconds. Well, first and foremost is reach out to the president and tell him to stop printing money. Obviously, inflation is directly related to an overabundance of money, and the interest rates have to be commensurate to whatever the money is being printed. And what we saw was on the fear in the back end of COVID by our failure of our governor to reopen the economy, we are experiencing the result of that. We are detrimental more than any other state in the union because of his lack of response by the current governor. What can the governor do? Expand upon the economy, make it conducive for companies to come into the state of Nevada with a stable tax platform and make it wages commensurate to the inflation increases so they can have a quality of life associated with that. You mentioned East, you mentioned affordable housing. How do we address affordable housing? It's not rent control. What it is is an increase in inventory, tax credits to builders um, for low income housing, and to ensure that we have the education, the labor force to occupy those jobs. Mr. Lombardo, thank you for that. And Vanessa has our next question. Thank you. Lake Mead and Lake Powell are both at historic lows. A federal water shortage has been declared on the Colorado River for the first time. And the federal government projects Lake Mead will drop another 26 feet by the end of next year. At the same time, UNLV projects Clark County's population will grow by half a million people in the next 10 years. Mr. Heller, this question comes to you first. You have 60 seconds to answer. Can Nevada afford continued growth given our dwindling water supply? Well, first of all, uh, the comment that the sheriff made about not by not supporting rent control is wrong. He said he would consider rent control in a previous interview, and I think that would be a disaster for the economy here in the state of Nevada. Having said that, talking about water, I think Southern Nevada has done a great job in conservation. Um, we have also a lot of ideas of, of how we're going to get more water down the Colorado River. Uh, it, we have here in Southern Nevada banked probably 10 to 20 years worth of water. When I was back in Washington, D.C., we took a look at the uh, at the Colorado River uh, compact, trying to figure out the reallocation of this water. More for Nevada. Uh, look what's going on in Arizona and California. I think desalinization is part of the solution. Let's get more water into California. We could reallocate the water that goes on uh, into, uh, uh, into California. Keep Keep this in mind. The Colorado River used to go into Mexico. It no longer goes there. And uh, that just goes to show you how difficult this process is, what we need to do to conserve water. We're doing a great job here in Southern Nevada. And I do think we have 10 to 20 good years of banked water in order for this community to thrive. Thank you, Mr. Heller. Uh, Mr. Lombardo, we will come to you for this question about water. But real quick, 15 seconds. Did you want to respond to Mr. Heller? Yeah, it's easy for somebody to throw shots like that. Um, when you when you say a global statement like that, I'll take it under consideration. Without the knowledge base to respond to it, 
it's, it's appropriate to educate yourself before you make a flippant answer. And I gave my answer tonight. So you agree and you said it. Okay, let's move on to Mr. Lee. Uh, Mr. Lee, can Nevada afford continued growth given our dwindling water supply? Yeah, In that's 60 a, seconds. Yes, ma'am. So I was on the Southern Nevada Water Authority Board for a while, and conservation is the, the, the greatest thing that we can do. If we could get other people on the Colorado River to do that alongside us, it would be great. Right now we are... Um, we're water banking in Arizona. We have eight years of water, as uh, Senator Hiller said, eight years of water in Arizona that we can use. Mexico, if we could get them to consider desalinization, then we would go in probably for 15 percent. Arizona would go in for 15 percent. We have to do things outside of California now. I know right now that Huntington Beach, a 15-year study, um, now the environmentalists have put that into court again, you know. So in what we're doing in North Las Vegas with our building codes is we're making sure we get rid of all the swamp coolers. We're getting rid of everything that doesn't allow water to go down a sewer and into a drain to be cleaned up. So we are doing extra in North Las Vegas to make sure that we can continue to keep the industrial market moving for better jobs, 21st century jobs, I should say, in our city. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Mr. Nora, can Nevada afford continued growth given our dwindling water supply? 60 seconds. Yeah, so you, you always have to look at these things as a, in, as a holistic situation. You can't just look at them one by one because these are very large problems that we're dealing with. So, so uh, people like me, we like to think outside the box. That's what we try to do when, when, when we're trying to solve problems. So of course desalinization makes a lot of sense and it's something we've got to be able to figure out. The second thing is when it comes to some of our industries here, uh, the state of Israel has done an amazing job in the desert creating water resources and doing that. So I think it's something we can copy. Now, I have done technology transfer from Israel in my previous job, and I know how to do that with regards to this particular technology as well. Been there, done that. The last thing is sometimes you want to think a little bit outside the box. I hear a lot about people talking about, hey, the Mississippi, the Mississippi floods all the time. Is there a way that we can get some of their flooding, flooded water? Why not? Let's give it a try. We got nothing to lose. That's how I look at things. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Lombardo, can Nevada afford continued growth given our dwindling water supply? You have 60 seconds. Yes. If we do not expand the economy, diversify the economy, we'll die. Um, gambling isn't getting it across the board. Every state in the nation is looking for gambling to solve their problems. In order to diversify the economy and expand upon the economy, we have to grow. Um, um, Senator Heller mentioned the Colorado River Pack. Yes, it's up for negotiation in 2026. The governor needs to get directly engaged in that negotiation and ensure that we get our fair share, especially from the state of California. Um, in the remediation levels, we are treated unfairly, and that is a result of 1922 when it was negotiated. There was no population in Southern Nevada, but obviously there is now for us. And you can't treat the state as a whole as uh, Guy Nor described. It, the, state, the state is separated north, south, and the rurals. The rurals need to become more efficient in their agricultural pieces. The Northern Nevada needs to catch the runoff of the waters with the build out of reservoir systems and in southern Nevada we have to support our congressional delegation in the recycling uh, coming out of Southern California. Thank you. Mr. Gilbert, can Nevada afford continued growth given our dwindling water supply? You have 60 seconds. Right now, Nevada is in a water crisis. Um, we will not be able to sustain the growth that's coming in Nevada if we don't do something and do something quick. 70% of Nevada's water is spent in agriculture. About 18% is spent in personal use. Another 8% is spent in mining. Um, and talking with some companies out of Israel, we could do a much better job irrigating more efficiently. Flood irrigating is one of the worst things we could do. We could save between 40 to 60% of that 70% if we work with partners like that in agriculture. On top of that, we're letting California take nearly seven times their allotment from the Colorado River. We need to shut that down. There's desalination we're talking about, which would be, which would definitely be an option, but there's other technology like weather modification, cloud seeding. The military has used it for 50, 60 years that could fill up these reservoirs in two to three months, not two to three years. We got to think outside the box. It's time for a businessman, entrepreneur, someone who's been successful across the board, not just in government, to get in there and do what needs to be done, and that's exactly what I would do. Thank you. Steve has the next question. Well, there are a record number of migrants coming across our border with Mexico this year. The Biden administration plans to lift a COVID-era health order known as Title 42, although last week a federal judge put it on hold. 
Republicans and Democrats have said it will allow even more people seeking asylum to come into the United States. Now, some governors, even from states that do not share a border with Mexico, have sent members of the National Guard to the U.S.-Mexico border to assist in border security. Mr. Lee, you're first with this question, and you have 60 seconds to answer. Would you activate and send Nevada National Guard troops to the southern border? First off, that's a very good question. Every 15 days, 275,000 people are coming across the border into our country. That's as big as North Las Vegas is, just so you can get an understanding of what we're creating. We don't have the services. We don't have the schools. We don't have the health care to take care of all these people. I would put my National Guard people at risk of the state issues to send them down to the border to see what we could do to slow down what's going on with that migrant the, 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 the 42 thing, we got to make sure that people coming in here are not sick and they come in legally, but we need to stop those migrants from coming. They're going to overwhelm us and our whole quality of life is going to go down in the United States. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Mr. Nora, would you activate and send uh, National Guard troops to the southern border? So as you probably know, my parents were legal immigrants. And, uh, we, you know, we went through the rules, and as do millions of people all over the world that follow the rules from everywhere, whether it's Africa or Asia or, or the Latin America, to come into this country legally. The fact that our federal government does not enforce our border laws is just horrifying to me because I've seen people stand in line everywhere. I've seen how much, how long it takes. Uh, so it's just, as states, you know, we're stuck with a federal government that doesn't do their job. And uh, to answer your question, yes, I would send the, 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 uh, my uh, National Guard out there uh, to help. But that's just, you know, that's just a Band-Aid. We need to fix this problem. Our federal government, when I'm governor, every day the federal government is going to hear from me, hey, it's Guinora from Nevada. <laughs> fix this problem. You're killing us. Thank you, Mr. Nora. Uh, Mr. Lombardo, would you uh, activate and send Nevada National Guard troops to the border? No. <clears throat> There's a finite amount of money. I was actually a, a military officer in the Nevada National Guard. And there's a finite amount of money associated with the deployment of the, your local state guard. And if you deploy them to the border, that money would dry up quickly and it would be prevent them from responding to any crisis associated within the borders of our state. What we need to do is force the hand of the federal government. Obviously, immigration is a federal issue. Uh, we need to support within the state the, the removal of individuals who have committed crimes and um, present them to ICE accordingly. Uh, I support legal immigration. I do not support illegal immigration. And I am the only one standing up here at this podium that has removed anybody who has committed crimes associated with and being undocumented illegal within the state of Nevada. Thank you, Mr. Lombardo. Mr. Gilbert, same question to you. Would you deploy troops to the southern border? Absolutely, without a doubt, I would deploy the troops. But unfortunately, Sheriff Lombardo, you know, we re refer to him among us as Sanctuary Joe for a reason. The Department of Justice Inspector General's report 2016 had Clark County as one of the worst uh, sanctuary counties in the nation. On uh, May 31st, 2016, it was labeled one of 10 jurisdictions that was found in violation of federal law for not turning over illegal immigrants to ICE. Um, now Nevada has the highest illegal immigrant population per capita in the nation, 223,000. We all know it's much higher than that. That's a direct you know, effect from not enforcing the law, and that took place right here. Um, since 2014, things have just been out of control with regards to Sanctuary City. It's exploded the crime rate by 500%, so we have to do something. If we don't send you know, help down to the border, it's going to continue to affect us in a negative way. We can't sustain it, what's going on here right now, so we absolutely must do something, and I would send our guard down there. Thank you, Mr. Gilbert. Um, Mr. Lombardo, you were um, invoked there for uh, a minute. Uh, 30 seconds to reply. Is Nevada, is Las Vegas a sanctuary city? No. Sanctuary determination comes out of the state legislature, and our legislature has not identified or labeled any jurisdiction within the state of Nevada as sanctuary. The removal of undocumented felonious immigrants is done within the local sheriff's jurisdiction and ability and within southern nevada i do that on a regular basis more so than any other county in the state of nevada and it's incumbent upon the resources available via ice and their ability to take those individuals into custody and remove them and the 500 percent 
That is a fictitious number that Mr. Gilbert presented. Thank you, Mr. Lombardo. Mr. Heller, uh, you're, you have 60 seconds to answer okay. the full question. Would you send Nevada National Guard troops to the border? I would, but let's, let's be clear. Joe's not telling the truth here. What happened, was he made Southern Nevada a sanctuary city. If you want to live in a dangerous neighborhood, live in a sanctuary city. And that's what this guy costs. You don't have to have the legislature deem us a sanctuary city. What you do is you have a sheriff like this guy that kicks ice out of Metro. And not only does he do that, he practices catch and release. And those uh, illegal immigrants that, that uh, committed crimes, he's putting back on the street. This is the problem that we have here in Southern Nevada. This guy needs to tell the truth and actually own up to it. We have a 50% increase in homicides. We have a 45% increase in violent crimes here in Clark County, all because of this guy deciding that he wanted Southern Nevada to be a sanctuary city. And this has to stop because it's affecting everywhere else in the state. Northern Nevada, Washoe, Elko, Winnemucca, Elko now has drugs and gangs because this guy is bringing these illegal immigrants into this state and spreading them across the state. Thank you, Mr. Heller. Uh, again, Mr. Lombardo, you've been uh, attacked. Uh, the, the crime statistics, are they related to the immigration issue? Absolutely not. You can't draw a line to the immigration issue at all in the crime statistics. And as far as the homicide rate, we are down currently down 3% in totality in homicide. If you look at the adjoining jurisdictions, North Las Vegas and Henderson, you can't say that. And I have not kicked ICE out of our jail in our system. We present the individuals from the jail to ICE. ICE makes the determination whether they take them. What we did do is we got sued by the ACLU and we lost the use of the federal database to identify these individuals. And as a result, we email them and we make phone calls. There is no change in the procedures. The national picture has lacked the resources associated for removal. I, thank you, thank you, Mr. Water. We'll, we'll have Coast more time Vegas, later in the Coast debate, Coast but our Vegas next question in. is Denise. Mr. Lee, we're going to get to you in just a moment. Questions. Gentlemen, in other words, we're going moving on to the individual truth, questions an now, and then we'll come back it. during your closing remarks. You can go ahead and yeah, come back to that. Inspector General's report's available on my website, Gilbert. All right, Mr. Gilbert, thank you. So now moving on to each candidate's individual question. We are keeping the same order, so Mr. Nora gets the first question here tonight. You have been successful as a venture capitalist, and you've been and have a successful business background as well. Um, you have said that that business background will help you govern the state. However, you would certainly need the support of a very likely Democratic legislature. So you have uh, 60 seconds here to answer. Since you have no government experience, how would you get anything done if elected as governor? So uh, first and foremost, uh, when you've been a venture capitalist like I have, uh, if you think that the legislature is a problem, try working with other venture capitalists, okay? They're the smartest people in the room, and usually they are, and they know everything better than everybody else, and that was just in my partnership. Now, think about the investments that was involved in outside of my partnership where we had boards of directors consisting of seven to eight to nine people. So I think dealing with the actual people in, in Carson City is going to be easy for me having dealt what I've dealt with before. And it takes an outsider. So I'm not gonna come in with the biases, even the bias that you just say, oh, well, yeah, it's gonna be hard to work with these people. It's a total opposite. I come in with nothing to lose and a lot to gain for the people in Nevada. I'm working for them. I'm not working the system. I'm not a politician. I'm just trying to solve problems for the people in Nevada. And that's what I'm gonna be doing. And that's how I will do it. Mr. Nora, thank you. Vanessa has our next individual question. Thank you. This next question is for Mr. Lombardo. Kevin McMahill is running for Clark County Sheriff, the position you currently hold. He was your second in command at the department before he retired, and you've endorsed him to replace you as sheriff. Mm -hmm. In 1995, when Kevin McMahill was a Metro Police officer, a fellow Metro officer says she witnessed McMahill and his partner commit <coughs> misconduct during a stop. Following the incident, McMahill failed a polygraph. We're going to play part of an 8 News Now I-Team report. They made me come over by their car and lift my skirt and show my privates. And then they took me to the front of the car and they went through my purse and they found a small amount of, of crack cocaine. And they said if I wanted to go, that I would have to eat that. Did you ever ask a woman 
while you were working as an officer to see her genitals? Never. I'm an Irish guy. I wear my, my emotion on my sleeve. I was huffing and puffing, and I was very upset before I ever got hooked up to that box. No chance in hell that I ever passed that test. Mr. Lombardo, you have 60 seconds to answer. Do you believe Kevin McMahill's two female accusers? Well, all I know is that uh, one particular, I don't know anything about the other female accuser. The one female accuser has been um, impeached uh, for lack of integrity in another case that I've become aware of. And quite often I got asked questions. First of all, I think this is a ridiculous question. It has nothing to do with running this for the state of uh, Nevada for the governor's position. And, um, but I will opine on it and I will discuss it because you're questioning my ability to endorse this individual. I believe that's the direction you're going with this. And I support Kevin McMahill 100%. This is an incident that took place 25 years ago, and he went through the due process associated with that, and he was cleared associated with those crimes. He had worked for three previous sheriffs prior to me before rising up into the ranks, and then I eventually made the decision to make uh, undersheriff, and he did a fantastic job during his tenure as the undersheriff. Mr. Lombardo, thank you. You mentioned um, she was impeached. Have you seen documentation to show that in 30 seconds? Uh, yes, I have. Okay, thank you. Denise has the next question. Moving on now to Mr. Gilbert. Um, you have called to reopen the investigation into the 1 October shooting, saying on your Facebook page, cover up, where's the money? Who was in that room? Mr. Gilbert, you have 60 seconds to answer. What do you think about the 1 October shooting was covered up? It's very simple. You know, I spent a lot of time. First of all, I lived in Las Vegas from 2003 till 2008. I opened a business down here 2013 through 16. A lot of friends down here. And every time I'm down here, someone brings up the Route 91 shooting. Um, whether it's the money or whether it's finding out who was, who was all in that room, they don't believe that the investigation was done properly. I've even met with Metro officers, and they've all said that at the end of the day, that there's just, you know, the, the, it has, there hasn't been full transparency on what took place. There's timelines that are off. There's, you know, things that are, you know, we, we look at witness statements, you look at video. And again, I've, I've dug in as much as I can. I do not have the knowledge that, you know, others do. So as I've said, you know, and I've said this numerous times, I, I reserve that from once when I'm in as governor and I can take a look at it. At the end of the day, I'm not going to call anybody's integrity into question, but I'll just say that it's been told to me numerous times that there was, not, not necessarily a cover-up, but people haven't been forthright, there's not enough transparency, and I said as governor to get to the bottom of it. I think Nevadans are due an answer five years later if there's still questions. So, uh, Mr. Lombardi, you were, were cleared out there talking about the fact that he doesn't feel there was transparency. He, he has questions uh, about this investigation. Mr. Lombardi, let me give you a moment to reply to that. Yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Well, I was directly um, involved in that incident, as you can imagine, and I lived it for several years, even today. And for people to impugn uh, my officer's integrity and the investigation associated with that is ridiculous. And I, I stand by them in all aspects of that investigation and to include the allegations that I embezzled along with um, Mr. Sisolak, $30 million associated that for, with that for the victims. Uh, we have posted on my website the distribution of that money to disprove those allegations. Every day I'm presented with individuals based with Joey Gilbert's campaign accusing me of an improper investigation, a cover-up, a conspiracy, and em embezzling the $30 million. We have posted the full investigation different than any uh, police department in the entire nation in this aspect involving a mass shooting. The full investigation is posted on the LVMPD website in full color for people to fully review. Mr. Lombardo, thank you for that. Steve? Mr. Heller, this next question is for you. Back in 2006, you told the Review Journal that you were pro-choice. In January of this year, you said you were pro-life. In 2017, you said at a town hall that you'd protect Planned Parenthood and had no problem with federal right. funding for it. The next day, your campaign clarified that you opposed funding for Planned Parenthood. So, Mr. Heller, the question is this, and you have 60 seconds to reply. How can voters trust that the positions you're taking today will be the same positions you take if you're elected? Well, first of all, I am pro-life and I'm proud of it. Let's get that clear. And uh, some of those uh, questions or concerns that you brought up, uh, uh, I was probably more libertarian at the time uh, when I when I when I 
kind of kept a hands-off situation here when it came to the abortion question. When I got to Congress, I had to make a decision, and I have an A-plus rating with the Nevada Right to Life and the National Right to Life. I have always voted uh, 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 consistently in, in, the, uh, in, in that uh, manner. Having said that, uh, the uh, Planned Parenthood comment, yes, I have to admit that I, I, I misspoke. Uh, I was talking about mammograms and women's health, not funding for Planned Parenthood. I have, uh, my record is very, very clear, 100% having voted against uh, any funding for Planned Parenthood. My uh, record will continue uh, when I am governor of this state to be pro-life. I am proud of the fact that we have two Supreme Court justices back in uh, Washington, D.C. that are going to overturn Roe v. Wade, Kavanaugh and Gorsuch, and I voted for both of them to bring this issue back to the state of Nevada because it's time for us to have a discussion here in the state of Nevada and where we want to go uh, on this particular issue. Thank you, Mr. Heller. Vanessa? Thank you. The next question is for Mr. Lee. On April 10th, a firearms instructor made racist comments at a training event for concealed weapons permits. You were sitting in the front row at the time. Let's take a look at a brief clip. Always leave the chicken grease off your fingers before shooting. <laughs> Always make sure there's a white person around so you have someone to blame for everything that goes wrong in your life. Mr. Lee, you have 60 seconds. You are the only Republican running for office in attendance that hasn't publicly commented on that presentation. Here's your opportunity tonight. Yeah, so I, well, I was sitting there, and that was like 10, 12 seconds, whatever it was, and I was on the front row because I want to learn as much as I could. This was an opportunity for me to understand the CCW laws. And he made those stupid statements. And after the event, I went up to him and said, you should never do that. If you want to be a successful businessman, you need to learn how to curb your mouth. You need to learn how to curb your presentation. Now, when people started calling me, it's not my job to try to run him out of business. It's not my job to, to, to follow the, the press and, and, and follow along and do what they want me to say and do. I had a private conversation with him. But why was I getting a CCW? That was the thing. I was there because... North Las Vegas, we used to be number one in crime. We're not anymore. I put 10 more million dollars in the budget. We have 200 more police officers. We opened our jail. And so right now, we're number four in crime. We've got Metro, Joe Lombardo, Sparks, Reno, and then us as, as the, where the crime is. I went on the strip the other day. It smelled like everybody smoked marijuana there. It just felt so dangerous. I thought, I might need to get a CCW if I'm getting gas and some of these goofy people are coming out the strip, and I need to protect my family. So that's why I was getting a CCW. Thank you, Mr. Lee. And to clarify, you mentioned you spoke privately with the instructor. But again, to clarify, 15 seconds, did you find that offensive? Um, yeah, I did, and that's why I went up. It's like when people take a, a picture with me and they have a beer in their hand. It puts me in a, a, a position I don't want to be in. That gentleman heard from me, but he didn't have to hear me tell you how bad he was. I had already told him that. I'm not in for destroying people that are running businesses. I want to make sure they're successful, but they learn. They need to stop doing it if they want to be successful. Thank you. Denise has the next question. All right, gentlemen, so we are going back now to questions for all of the candidates. Uh, the U.S. Supreme Court may overturn Roe v. Wade and leave the decision on abortion up to the individual states. Now, Nevada law currently allows abortion up to 24 weeks into a pregnancy and later if the health of the mother is threatened. Now, our law would have to be changed by a vote by the public. Now, that does leave some room for other laws to be passed. So. First off in this question tonight is Mr. Lombardo, you were first, you have 60 seconds. Would you support perhaps adding parental notification laws, waiting periods before ending a pregnancy or other restrictions maybe like on the Plan B pills, Mr. Lombardo? Yes, absolutely. I would take that under consideration. First and foremost, I'm a pro-life individual. I plan to lead as a pro-life governor and any legislation that would come or bill or resolution that would come before my desk, I would look at it with a pro-life lens. Um, with that being said, I would take under consideration anything associated with the pro-life view um, moving forward. Is there anything specific that you might consider if it came across your desk? Not at this time, no. All right, let's move on to uh, Mr. Gilbert. The same question. Do you support any additional abortion restrictions? 60 seconds. No, I'm first, first and foremost, I'm pro-life and um, I'm against abortion personally. 
Um, at the end of the day, Nevada has ingrained in our statutory you know, law and, and protected by the Constitution through the statutory law the right to choose in this state. If anything, I would like to see it rolled back to 20 weeks. But again, that's not something for a, a governor. That's something that would be going before the people. We would put that to a vote of the people and our elected representatives. Um, I do think, though, that we do need things like age and limits. You know, right now, because of Governor Sisolak, he's taken away, you know, parental consent. And again, you know, if you look at what's happening here in Nevada, we're the number two and number five per capita sex trafficking and child sex trafficking hubs in the United States. And what, who are those young kids getting taken in, young women getting taken in? Those are girls that are being sex trafficked. And if they can then be brought in for an abortion without consent, that's dangerous. It's something we don't want to do. We don't want to become an abortion state. And so I would take those protections as governor for sure. Mr. Gilbert, thank you. Mr. Heller, I know you touched on this topic a yeah, moment ago, but uh, would you support any additional abortion restrictions to our current Nevada law? Well, first of all, I think the last two uh, candidates uh, that just spoke uh, basically uh, said they're pro-choice. Uh, when, uh, when you say that you're going to support the laws that we have in place, um, but I'm pro-life, I think that makes you pro-choice. Um, and that uh, is in anybody's definition. As I mentioned, I uh, supported both, both Gorsuch and Kavanaugh uh, when I was in in the Senate, and uh, and their votes are going to overturn Roe v. Wade, and it's going to come to the state, and I'm going to do everything I possibly can to make Nevada a pro-life state. Um, I don't like the 24, uh, 24 weeks. I want to reduce that. Obviously, parental consent, all of those issues that, uh, that you're talking about. I am pro-life, and I'm proud of it, and I want Nevada to be a pro-life state, and I do not want to make Nevada a sanctuary state uh, for abortions. That, that cannot happen here in the state of Nevada, and I will keep that from happening. Is there something specific, though, that you might consider? Yeah, yeah, I will do whatever it takes. I'll do whatever it takes. I, I, I will uh, introduce legislation. In fact, I will uh, raise the money necessary to overturn the, uh, the abortion statutes that we have here in the state of Nevada. If it takes two or three million dollars to create it, uh, to, to raise the money to get it back on the ballot, because I realize that's the only way it can change, mm -hmm. that's what I will do. I want to move Nevada in the right direction. Right now, we're in the wrong direction. Okay. All right. Uh, um, reference, do you reference me, and I think it's only fair I get to respond. Uh, Mr. Gibbard, I'll give you 15 seconds just to clarify okay. that That's point. Very, just very quickly, you know, you know, I toured the Women's Resource Medical Center and in Nevada, having the opportunity, you know, we need to work with faith-based leaders, we need to with parents, children, teach the sanctity of human life. We do need to do a better job as a community and that's something I would focus on. But again, at the end of the day, as I said, Nevada is a, is a, is a pro-choice state and we would have to respect that. All right, Mr. Lee, the same question, 60 seconds. Would you support any additional abortion restrictions? No, I won't. I will fight to save those little babies' lives. They are blessings from Father in Heaven. I have seven children, 30 grandchildren, and one great-grandchild with another coming. I'm excited about this life. I, the problem we have is the abortion issue in the state of Nevada. Sometimes there's not a system that allows these mothers to do the right thing, and they think this is their only, only option. I believe in the heartbeat, Bill. I believe that little baby is, at the moment there's a, a heartbeat, that's a baby, and I would fight to, to get us back to that point there. For 14 years with the Nevada Right to Life organization, I was A-rated by, uh, by them. Um, I do believe, though, if it's rape, the life of the mother, or incest, that is a family issue. But I just want to go on the record is the legislature will know not to send something to me that has nothing to do with protecting life instead of killing life. Thank you. Mr. Lee, thank you. And we wrap up this question tonight with Mr. Nora. Again, as a reminder, you have 60 seconds. Do you support any additional abortion restrictions in Nevada? So I am pro-life, and I will tell you why. Uh, as you probably know, uh, when I was 15, I was in the Civil War. Um, and when you've taken lives and you've seen lives taken, you become pro-life. And that's my experience. And I usually stop right there on that subject. Any specific restrictions that you might consider, though? You know, it's going to have to come through the people, through the legislature, and I'll decide then. But you know my bias. Okay. Thank you, sir. Our next question comes from Steve. Gentlemen, we want to make sure we have time for closing statements, so the answers to these questions will be 30 seconds instead of the usual 60 seconds. Uh, the topic is education. 
Uh, the National Chamber of Commerce says our education system is the second worst in the country. In the first six months of this year, Clark County School District has had more than 5,000 violent incidents. Now substitute teachers at CCSD only need to have a high school diploma to be called in to work with children. So Mr. Gilbert, we'll start with you. Uh, you have 30 seconds to answer this question. What are your specific plans to fix the Clark County School District? It's very simple. We need to remove restorative justice, credit recovery, the absenteeism, and the drug use. Uh, far too much violence is taking place. The teachers are leaving the profession at record numbers. They feel like no one's supporting them. We need to go to the to teachers' union. There's less than 50% of the teachers in the union now. Tell them they better start backing the teachers. We decertify the unions. We're in a full crisis here in Nevada. Something must be done because our children are not being educated, and they're far more in far more danger than they've ever been before. Parents are scared to drop them off at school. Teachers are afraid to go to school. And if we don't act soon, soon enough, it's going to create a problem that's going to be around here for generations. Thank you, Mr. Gilbert. Mr. Heller, same question, 30 seconds, uh, uh, fixes for the Clark County School yeah. District. Let's be clear. We have a governor that in his first term spent half his time shutting the schools down. That's why we have second graders that can't read, third graders that can't write, fourth graders that can't do arithmetic. This has to stop. We have to get more, more adults into colleges getting their degrees in education. 20 years ago, 20% of the people in colleges got an education degree. Do you know today it's 2%. 2%. We can't get teachers into the schools. We need to pay them more. We need to make sure that they're safe, make sure that the CRT is not taught, make sure that, they're, that uh, kindergartners aren't lear learning sex education. We need to back the school districts, but we need school board members that are conservative and that care about the parents more than they care about the schools themselves. Thank you, Mr. Heller. I appreciate that. Mr. Lee, same question in 30 seconds, the Clark County School District. Yeah, in North Las Vegas, we've got more charter schools, private schools, and parochial schools than anywhere else in this valley. Our parents want educational opportunities. We have 42 schools in North Las Vegas. That's enough to have our own school district. Uh, we believe in North Las Vegas that we want to work with education at a closer level. Um, we want local control. We want our own school trustees. We want to pull away where we can compete like we are with these charter schools to be able to uh, allow those children to come to us and we will retain and recruit teachers better if North Las Vegas is in charge of it rather than that conglomerate school district. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Mr. Norris, same question in 30 uh, seconds. Yeah, you know, education has been an issue in the state since 1998. I was reading a book, uh, Kenny Gwynn was talking about education way back when. It hasn't worked. Whatever they've done has not worked. So you need somebody from the outside who's going to come in and look at this as a restart. That's what we do in, 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 the war, in the real world, in the business world. We look at these things that restarts. For me, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have an education summit. Everybody who's a stakeholder in education is going to come in, sit down with the governor, I'll buy the pizza, and we're going to hang around until we get a solution because this is not acceptable by any means. Uh, Power to Parents is trying to help. There's lots of organizations that are being involved right now to help, and that's what it's going to take. It's going to take all of us. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Mr. Lombardo, you wrap this up. 30 seconds. Fixes for the Clark County School District. Clark County School District specific? Is yes. that it, Steve? Yes. Okay. Well, it, you know, it all works together. The economy, the safety of our communities, and education have to work together for the success in the entirety of the state. Uh, and specific to Clark County School District, um, uh, Mr. Gilbert alluded to it, restorative justice. It is a failed program brought forward by the legislature and the current superintendent and the governor who provides the vision via the Department of Education has failed to act on it. As a result of that, kids aren't comfortable in learning, kids aren't comfortable in going to schools, teachers aren't comfortable in being there. Uh, we have to change that paradigm sooner than later. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Denise. All right, gentlemen, so now we will move on to our closing remarks, uh, in actually in reverse order of our poll. Each of you will have 30 seconds to wrap up, and we begin tonight with closing remarks from Mr. Nora. So 45 years ago, to this day, I was a 15-year-old carrying an AK-47 in Beirut, Lebanon, fighting for my people and their freedom. I stand in front of you today, a successful businessman who's lived the American dream. And I'm running for governor so that each and every one in Nevada has the opportunity to live the American dream. I tell my kids when I do my counseling on uh, music, I've got your back. As your governor, I will have your back, Nevadans. I will be honored to have your vote as well. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Nora. Now, also for our closing remarks, we move to Mr. Lee. Again, as a reminder, you have 30 seconds here. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, you know, North Las Vegas, when I took over as mayor, was going to have to give back its charter. And so I was elected. If you had $10, more dollars, ten dollars in your wallet, you had $10 more dollars north than the state of Nevada had. Pardon me. We got in there. We brought our conservative business values in there. We brought people in there that were smart. We, uh, we got government out of the way. We learned how to lose, use this system and understood we were competing against Henderson, Las Vegas, and uh, Clark County. And so what we did is we provided more jobs because of that. I think good government is the way to do, handle these things and not poor business practices. And that's what our, our city of North Las Vegas is doing. I can fix Nevada. None of these guys can. I will. Mr. Lee, thank you. Now we move on to Mr. Heller for your closing remarks. Again, 30 seconds. All right. What Nevada needs is a proven conservative. I've spent a career cutting taxes, reducing the size of government, and looking for relief for Nevada's, Nevada's hardworking families. What are we going to get in November? Do you want a proven conservative, or do you want somebody who's best friends with Steve Sisolak? Sheriff Lombardo and Steve Sisolak contribute to each other's campaigns. They raise money for each other. They sit on each other's transitions, uh, as transition committees. I mean, this is ridiculous that we have two people identify Sisolak and Lombardo, when you can actually have a proven conservative that has cut taxes, who's reduced the size of government, who's pro, who, who is pro-life, we have an opportunity to make a real difference here in the state of Nevada in this election. All right, Mr. Heller, thank you. Now we move on to Mr. Gilbert for your closing remarks. Thank you. First and foremost, in Clark, in Clark County, we need to you know, break up the school district. And secondly, we need school vouchers, education vouchers statewide, unless the public schools are forced to compete for students, they have no incentive to improve. That being said, I've proven in the past 27 months that I've been fighting for Nevadans on my own time and my own dime. I got the churches open, I got early treatment medication, the masks off the children, and we're appealing that one to the Ninth Circuit. Again, um, the American quality, American, you know, American dream and American quality of life is only safe with someone that's actually going to step up. Leadership is action, not a position. I've proven that. I'll keep proving that, and I look forward to being our next governor. Mr. Gilbert, thank you. And Mr. Lombardo, you get the opportunity to make your closing remarks. All right, let's last. be honest with each other. For all practical purposes, this primary is over. There's nothing more to argue about. I've weathered 12 months of attacks from Steve Sisolak and his PACs, and from most of the individuals standing here next to me. And why? why? Why have I been able to work, uh, weather them? They're all bogus. They're not working. And the reason why they're not working is because I'm leading in all the polls. I have the most money associated with a successful campaign. I have the endorsement of President Donald Trump. And I have the endorsement of 16 of 17 sheriffs. So we need to call, get come together. We need to go after Sislak. Sislak is the problem. He has ruined our economy. He has ruined our schools. He's ruined our safety. And I'm the only one that has the leadership and experience that Nevadans can trust. Mr. Lombardo, thank you and thank you to all of our candidates tonight. That's our time. And thank you for watching our Republican primary gubernatorial debate. We want to thank all of the candidates for participating tonight. Mail-in ballots are already arriving. Early voting starts May 28th and ends June 10th. Primary day, as a reminder, is June 14th.